Hello and welcome to Just Board, the show about computers, microcontrollers, and more. Today we'll take a look at the BeagleBone Black. This is a single board computer designed to fit inside of an Altoids tin. It's equipped with the Citara AM3358 from Texas Instruments, which packs a 32-bit ARM Cortex-A8 processor running at 1 GHz. In addition to this main processor, the board also contains two 32-bit processors known as PRUs, or Programmable Real-Time Units, operating at 200 MHz each. These processors aren't shared directly with the kernel and can't be interrupted, thus providing real-time programming capabilities. The memory available is 512 MB of DDR3L SD RAM, and for storage, there's a micro SD slot and also 4 GB of built-in E. MMC storage. The Ethernet port provides 100 megabits per second and there are two USB ports. One of them is a standard USB 2.0 host for connecting peripherals to. The other one is a mini USB 2.0 client device, meaning that if you connect it to your computer, the BeagleBone will become accessible as a storage device and a network device. This port can also be used to supply power. Another option for powering the board is to supply a regulated 5 volts to the barrel plug. You can also supply a regulated 5 volts to one of these VDD pins, but make sure your power supply is stable or you can damage the board. And finally, these unpopulated pins can be soldered to a connector for a lithium ion battery. For media, there's a micro HDMI port that can handle both video and audio output. There are five onboard LEDs, one of which is a power indicator, and the other four are all user programmable. And finally, there are three buttons, one for power, one for reset, and one is used to flash the eMMC storage at boot. As far as expansion pins go, there are a whopping 92 of them, split between two 46-pin headers. Nine of them are ground pins, two of them provide 5 volts, Two of them provide 3.3 volts, and one of them provides 1.8 volts. There are also pins for power and reset functions. There are four complete UARTs, and an additional one that's TX only, two I2C ports, and two SPI ports. There are eight hardware pulse width modulators on the board, and some of them are optionally available on multiple pins. There are four timer pins, which can be configured as high resolution clocks operating at different frequencies. Seven of the pins are analog inputs capable of reading anywhere between 0 and 1.8 volts with a resolution of 12 bits each. 25 pins are directly accessible from the PRU with single cycle access speed and a whole bunch of general purpose digital I.O. pins, 65 of them. Many of these are optionally shared with the special features but can be configured either way. As far as operating systems go, the standard one is a custom Debian Linux distribution which contains all kinds of goodies for getting started, including a web-based IDE that you can connect to over USB and program the board right away. And yes, it comes with several example projects to point you in the right direction. Besides this Debian distribution, there are also several other Linux variants to choose from. So what's it for? With the two PRUs, the board provides a best of both worlds scenario where you can have your high level Linux libraries while also having your fine grained performance. They're not the most powerful boards, but the amount of IO pins and real time execution make them great for things like robotics, sensor hubs, custom device interfacing, and driving devices or displays that require a lot of pins. There's also a wide range of expansion devices known as capes in the BeagleBoard community that you can snap into the headers to add new features. So what isn't it for? With only 100 megabits per second Ethernet and 512 megabytes of RAM, it's not the best option for pushing large amounts of data. And really, it just doesn't compete very well in the gaming media category in general. Some of the most interesting features on the board, like the PRUs, aren't very approachable to beginners. So if you're new to single board computers or microcontrollers, there are probably better boards to start with. But considering the main distribution is so user friendly, it also wouldn't be a bad board to start with. You just have to dig pretty deep before you get into the cool features. Well, that's the Beagle Bone Black. Go to the comments below and let me know what board you'd like to see next. But before we go, here's a demo of using the USB client feature and one of the analog input pins to create a theremin out of a photoresistor.